All right, got a very different video for you here today. I am going to be looking at Ableton Live 11 and the Push 2. This video is a long time coming because I purchased this combo almost a year ago. So I've had it in my studio, I've played around with it just a little bit, but really haven't had the time to invest in learning a new piece of software. So no, I'm not gonna be leaving my other programs anytime soon, but I am primarily an educator and I want to be able to communicate with people who use Ableton Live, which is apparently a very large portion of the DAW world. I will be able to show it in future videos. I'll be able to show software, other programs running inside Ableton Live. And I'm also excited about exploring the world of Ableton exclusively. So the plugins and effects and stuff that come just with Ableton Live. So in this video, I'll be going over my first impressions over a year of the software and the hardware connection. So how does that integrate? You know, like if you are used to a world like machine, what can you expect with the push to? Or if you're an Ableton Live user, what makes the push to exciting from my point of view? And in future videos, of course, I'll be getting into the software, maybe tutorials on some of the Ableton push stuff as I become more familiar with it. But this really is the starting point for me and Ableton. And I'm excited to be able to collaborate with other users of Ableton Live. I've got my Beats and Chats show, so if you haven't seen that, make sure you click the links in the description. My first two guests were Knox Squared and Sanjay C. Sanjay C, of course, uses Ableton Live, and I really didn't know what I was doing when I was hanging out with him. And I've already filmed my third episode with one of the greatest musicians I've ever met, and this guy also uses Ableton Live. I won't give it away. I'll put a link in the description once it pops up. But right now it's kind of a secret and I'll be editing that video soon and get that up so you can watch that interview as well. So let's get into my impressions of the software and the hardware and see how Ableton does its thing. So the first things I should mention are my experiences with session view and the arrangement view. So arrangement view is the traditional way of working with the DAW, which is kind of left to right. And for whatever reason, Ableton has decided to put the inspector, as we call it in Cubase, over on the right-hand side, which takes your brain a little getting used to, I will say. But this is arrangement view, left to right. You know, you record stuff, it goes in a linear fashion. And then there's the session view, which is similar to the way of working with machine. And I love working in that kind of pattern-based world. So you start with a clip, you start recording into a clip. They are little patterns that are gonna repeat. And then over here on the right-hand side, you're gonna be creating scenes. So each one of these is a different track. So you could have something like a bass here, and a drums here, piano over here, and you record all the different clips, and then you just click on the clips that you want to play in each scene. The thing with this program, the thing that I have to remember is that it's called Ableton Live for a reason. And it definitely began as a program that was meant for people who wanted to create clips in a live scenario, have them trigger, have them play back, and that's what one of its major strengths is. And I am not even scratching the surface of that aspect of it right now. And so it's kind of unfair for me to come into this world and go, okay, what does it do? Oh, it doesn't do this or it doesn't do that. That's, that's terrible. How could it possibly not have that feature? But then you realize, no, this is, this is meant for something different. And it's going to take me a while to really understand what that means. I do have some live videos where I've created music on the machine and the machine plus and recorded stuff, tracked stuff and did it all in a live looping way. But Ableton apparently is designed for that from the ground up. So that is something that I'm gonna have to get into. I did play around with session view a little bit and I came into a roadblock which also affected me in arrangement view. And that was where if I was playing with something in session view and I had a bunch of clips that say one clip that's a drum beat and another clip that's a bass line, maybe four bars, the drum beats maybe two bars, and then I went to a piano track and played something in on the piano that was maybe eight bars. If I went over to the editor of my little clip and started at say bar four of my piano clip, then what would happen is every time I press play, if I had to go back and do some editing, every time I press play, all the other clips would restart. And I couldn't find any way, any possible way to have clips start in sync with my, say, my long piano chunk or my long piano clip. If it starts at bar four, then the other clips should start 
at whatever they would be at if I was at bar four on the piano uh, clip. So this is all sounding very confusing. So let's just make a little drum beat and I'll show you what I mean. Because I really do want to reach out to any Ableton users out there and find out how do you deal with this issue. So we're going to deal with that issue. Then we're going to get into arrangement view and I'm going to show you a piece of software that I think is absolutely essential for working with the push too. And it's very cheap and I'll put a link in the description to that. Okay, so let's just put a beat in and we'll just play with session view just for a minute, just so you can see what the session view thing is all, all about. So let's go look at the browser of Ableton. And up top, we've got the browser here and I'm just starting to organize my categories of favorite things, favorite sounds and stuff like that. The browser does work pretty well. I just really wish that we had the ability to go into something like drums and choose styles. There is no thinning down of the data in this browser. Patches and sounds by genres and stuff like that. So if I'm looking for drums, you're just kind of going through a monstrous list of drum sounds that comes with this full version of Ableton Live. I'm really just gonna have to sit here and go through them, find my favorites, because uh, there isn't a way to thin stuff out. But they do give you a preview of the sound as you arrow down. So these are some of the stock kits that come with Ableton. We can also go over to the push and do the same thing. So we can go to drums and then you're just going to start going through the all the kits. So I'm going to go to this piece kit and try this one out. Really beautiful display. I love this one big display here. So I'm going to try loading that one up. Okay, so let's put a little beat in here and then of course all we have to do to tap tempo. So let's go four, something like that. And then I can double click on my clip here and see it in the bottom, just like we can see in all sorts of other programs. And they've got some really nice MIDI editing features in Ableton that I am loving already. We won't bother looking at that kind of stuff just yet, but let's just have a look at what I've got recorded. I'm going to hit quantize on my push and then we can see that it's popped up. And if I just hold down the quantize button on the push, then we're going to see the, the quantize settings, which I love. I love how easy this kind of access is. So let's let's try cranking up the swing amount a little bit and then quantize that and see how that sounds. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I can go over to like, say this hi-hat right here, and I can start adding in some lighter hi-hats according to this little pattern. And of course, with these 64 pads, let's take advantage of this. I can change the layout of this thing so that we see velocity. So now we can see the colors according to velocity. So I'm just gonna go with a lower velocity right here, and I'm just gonna start punching in a bunch of hi-hats. Let's have a listen to that. There we go, quantize that. So you see how easy it is to start entering in drum hits. You've got this thing laid out right here. You've got the velocity over on the right hand side. It's a really beautiful setup. And then of course we've got the view of everything right here, which is also really nicely done. So we've got like our snare right here. So say there was some crackle on here, we could get this fade out to be more significant. Uh, let's see. We can hear that it's having an effect. And then we can do all sorts of other stuff to it there. So we'll look at slicing in a bit because that's a huge part of what I do. So we've got really easy access to all of the kinds of things that I would need to see like choke groups. Uh, we've got different ways of processing each one of these sounds. Everything can be done in that sense with the controller. I'm really impressed with that. Now let's put in a bass. So I'm going to go to my next track. I'm just going to click over here. I've got a MIDI track already and I'm just going to go add device and then we're going to go to an instrument. Let's look at operator. This one look is really impressing me. So let's go to maybe ambient and evolving. Oh yeah, 
Let's try that one. I'm going to load that one up. So right now our attack is 2.7 seconds. Let's crank that way down. So I'm going to click the scale button and I'm going to set this to chromatic. So we're just going to go over to a chromatic scale for now. Uh, normally I wouldn't do that, but we'll try something a little different. On the chromatic scale layout, I'm going to set it to minor. So it's still chromatic, but I can see the minor scale is lit up to show me this is where this is where a C minor scale would be. So these white notes, and then of course we have the octave up there. The last thing I want to do is add one more track. So I'm just going to go add track. So let's go over to instruments and we'll go to electric, which is their uh, virtual electric piano. So roads and things like that, but all modeled, which is pretty cool too. Let's go to piano keys. I like the arrows for this. Let's make the reverb a little longer. Okay, so let's put something in there. Okay, so we've got a simple little thing played in there. I'm going to go over to quantize and let's go to quantize amount and let's hit it to 50%. So I do kind of like a iterative quantize to it. So now when I press quantize, everything gets 50% closer. So you can hear I, I made a, a bit of a mistake right here. And here is my issue with session mode and something to be aware of is that when I go to this spot to play back, if I press play from right here, you'll see that all of the other clips start over from their beginning. I'm going to hear everything else incorrectly at that point. So if I was arranging something, you know, the bass instrument would be on the wrong note and the horns would be on the wrong note or whatever. So if anybody knows of ways around this or let me know how you deal with this kind of issue if you love working with Session View because I like working with Session View a lot. I really like working with patterns. It's, it's a different way for composers to think. So the next thing we would do is go over to our arrangement view. So I can go back right now. I can press record in here and record or capture those little patterns that I just made. Now, as soon as I want to work in arrangement view, I click this little button right here, and now we can see the stuff that I just recorded. So by just pressing the record button, I'm capturing what I'm doing over here. And I could have gone back over to session view and you know chosen my patterns and stuff like that. There's also other ways to get your patterns from session view over to the arrangement view. So once we get over to arrangement view, this is again a place where I found myself really desperately needing something in the push controller. So when I press play right now, it's always going to start from the beginning or it's going to start from that marker. So if I put the marker right here, now it starts from that point. And every time I press play, it starts from that point. And when you're on the keyboard, you just press shift space bar and it picks up from where you're at. And anytime you press space bar, it starts from the beginning. And most Ableton users are probably like, yeah, that's the way it should be. That's the way I love it. And that's totally fine, but it just doesn't work on the push controller. So when I press play on the push controller, there is no shift play. So this is when I started to really scratch my head because there's no rewind, there's no fast forward, there's no transport controls. So I don't have a jog wheel that I can, you know, rip around with the locator. So I did a lot of research and finally found a little piece of software called push to arrange mode or PAM 
and actually I think it's PAM2 now because it's the second version and it is kind of life-changing for me or should I say life-changing for me is that no okay it really is something that has changed the push too for me and I just started to play with it so I'll put a link to PAM2 in the uh, the description and definitely go check it out if you're a push user or if you're interested in getting the push and basically what it does is it gives you one more mode to use your uh, push controller in so I'm going to put push to arrange mode on the master here and you can see this this little piece of software I am just going to press this little I button so you can see exactly what this software does so you see all of these buttons now are going to be controlling different things in Ableton so we are talking about very important functions that are now mapped to buttons and knobs and other knobs that you're already using for other things things like adding a locator you know uh, some of you when I was talking about where the playhead starts and stuff like that you're saying just just drop in some locators dude and this is a really easy way to do that as well and then I can jump around from locators as I get better with Ableton I'm going to be putting locators in everywhere little markers that I can jump uh, quickly between the sections of the song and then the biggest buttons for me continue playback and play from selection so now if I press play it starts from the beginning and I press continue playback it starts wherever you left off so that to me probably one of the most important buttons now on my push to device a couple other things you know we've got uh, up at the top we've got track zoom which is a really useful thing we've got scrub the arrangement so here is our jog wheel so there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here which I will dig into in a future video but I just wanted to throw this out there as this brilliant way to really get a lot more out of the push to controller so to get that this PAM2 to show up you just press shift session and up pops the controls and then I'm just going to press note to go back to my regular layout so the next thing I need to do here is I'm going to play in some chords we're going to try chopping some audio up okay so I've got a couple of things played in there and I'm going to turn those into audio so all I need to do here in live is right click on the track and I'm just going to go freeze track and then I am going to right click one more time and I'm going to go flatten track and it turns it into audio click on that chunk of audio and I'm going to go over here to the controller and hit convert and I'm going to convert that into a simpler which is their sampler now we've got my audio right here and because I kind of played it freely I didn't play to the click necessarily now what I want to do with this is put in some slices as we see we've got a couple of different controls up at the top and I'm just going to click to mode and I'm going to go to slicing mode and one thing I love about the push to and about live here is the ability to warp things to change the the speed or the pitch of something independent of each other so you can change the, the pitch very easily without changing the speed and vice versa and then you can go and slice things and still warp things after the fact so that to me hasn't been done as well as it has been done here by any other program so we've got our slicing mode and I am going to go here and slice manually so I'm going to set slice to manual and this is a very simple process so I click the first one drop in a slice and then I'm just going to go like this I'm going to enter in a bunch of other slices okay so now I can go to this slice right here I can go to the nudge for that slice and say put it right there and let's go to this next one go to the next one And then we've got all these other slices so let's take this one here and we're going to nudge that to the end 
then this one we're going to put to this one. And then this one we'll put right here. And then this one we don't need. I'm going to hold delete and then click on it. There we go. Slice six deleted. Very, very easy to go through and start doing my, my favorite kind of slicing stuff to this uh, with the software. So next thing I'm going to do is put a compressor on there because we just need to get the volume up on these slices. So I'm going to go to my basics here and I'm just going to click on compressor, which is kind of like their basic compressor. And all I have to do is grab the actual folder and drag it right onto this track. Here's where things get really, really fun. You get to see the audio sort of cruising through this little compressor on the push or on the software itself. And I've never seen a visualization like this. But let's go and crank our threshold down. And then let's, let's go to our ratio, crank that up a bit. And now you can see how much it's pushing down with a little line up at the top, which is just so brilliant. It's like an instant visual feedback and showing the person what a compressor is actually doing. The visual feedback on the Push 2 controller with effects and synthesizers is fantastic. I am totally, totally impressed with that. And I can't wait to see what else, what other surprises I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get along the way. And then now, once I start getting into editing on the software, I can very easily start from wherever I want because of this nice little jog wheel. So you see that little blue thing that's ripping around up on the top there? That's all thanks to my old buddy Pam too. Now when I press play on the regular thing, it starts from the beginning. If I press play from here, it's going to start from wherever I stopped. And then if I move my jog wheel around, that little blue guy moves. And then now I can press this other one and it's going to start from wherever that point is. So really going to be easy for me to rip around the project thanks to this little piece of software. So it's kind of a no brainer and it's super, super cheap. I think it's going to cost you like 10 bucks, under 10 bucks. So other than that, let's just have a quick look at other things that I'm really excited about because this video is going to be like six hours long. I'm just going to go add track and we're going to go back over to uh, something like that uh, operator. And let's just go to bass. Sure, let's load that one up. I'm going to get out of session view, just go over to note. And then we click on the operator button here. And then now I'm going to start going through the pages. And then let's look at the oscillator envelope. Adjust the envelope. We got perfect feedback right from the device. Adjust the decay, the sustain, bring that down. And then the release. It's like turning every one of their synthesizers into an actual hardware synthesizer, but with this display as feedback. So if you think about it with their own devices, this controller is beautiful. But the problem is I've found that it doesn't play really nicely with other virtual instruments. So that's something you're going to have to map out on your own. So I do wish that Ableton would support other software and give you the ability to load up something like Omnisphere and really see a beautiful layout for Omnisphere on the push too. So hopefully we get that kind of collaboration in the future, but right now it's just not kind of there. So amazing piece of software, amazing piece of hardware, really excited about getting into the whole world and discovering all of the instruments that they've got in Ableton Live. It's not about just one piece of software on my channel. It's about making music and creating music and crafting music, all of that kind of stuff. And I think the more I can speak to a wider audience, the better I, I will have a chance of getting what I want to teach out there. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the bell and I'll see you in the next video.